Call Halalium, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukal Kadash, double honors to the elders and the apostles of great millstone who rule well. Shalom and salutation to the hopeful elect that I came out there spreading the gospel throughout the four corners of the earth with sincerity and truth, presenting their bodies as a living sacrifice and holding themselves accountable to the standard that Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai gave us coming back into our heritage, which was taken away from us, being the Hebrew Israelites. The Hebrew Israelites are the black Latinos and Native American descent. All right, and in confusion of faces that may look like the other nations that scattered abroad. That's who we are. Shalom to the few sisters that do listen to us as well. Mr. Brother Yarmar from the Great Millstone Chicago camp, basically coming back to you with another lesson concerning some kook. All right, some bugged out Negro that walked past the camp, and he gonna walk past the camp on Saturday asking us talking about a y'all Hebrew Israelites. And you know I respond, you are too. You was born an Israelite. Well, I'm not an Israelite no more. Hey, look, man, I don't give a fuck how much a dog meow. He's not going to be a cat, all right? You want to hold yourself to the, account, the accountability and the standards of the heathens, nations, all right? Because they have no laws. They have no statutes. They have no commandments. They have no accountability. They have free doom, all right? That's what they have, all right? They have liberties that a Hebrew Israelite won't have. But a Hebrew Israelite has credibility. He has responsibility. He has accountability because the Hebrew Israelites was set up to represent Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shah. He said, you only have I known out of all the nations I've, I've begotten. All right? He said, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. A great responsibility comes with that. But see, Jake, you know, he was so called in the truth, so he liked it to glitz and glamour. He liked it to be a king. He liked it to language. Probably the Hebrew sounded cool to him. Shalom and all the, the greetings and the, we can drink wine and shit, the cool shit. But... On this side, it's not about the cool shit. We wasn't put here, all right, for that. We were put here to call our sins to remembrance in the land of our captivity, all right? But um, let me just get right into it. This is Ezekiel 3 and um, 1. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go and speak unto the house of Israel. And so I opened my mouth, and, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then I eat, then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth, it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go and get thee into the house of Israel and speak unto them for with my words, for speak and speak my words unto them. Alright, it says, For thou art not sent to a strange people. Salakia, for thou art not sent into a people of strange language. Salakia, for thou art not sent to a people of strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. All right. So he was speaking. He was sent to speak to the house of Israel. All right. He said, "Eat this roll, and it shall go down sweet." But you know what? I, what is in this roll? When we go up to the second chapter. Hello. This is Ezekiel 2 and, um, let me see, it's like the last, yet con, Ezekiel 2 and 10, it said, and he's, matter of fact, let me read it. Ezekiel 2 and 9, he says, and when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me, and a roll of a book was therein, and he spread it before me, and was written, and in it was written, within and without. And there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. So this book went down sweet, all right, but it came down bitter because it's sweet to know you're an Israelite. It's sweet to know that you you would inherit the kingdom of heaven. But on this side, it's bitter because what, what happens? The scriptures say, with much wisdom is much grief. And when a man increases in knowledge, he increases sorrows. And that's true because he actually knows and understands and perceives that 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 he's in captivity. All right, that that the so-called white man, woman, and child is wicked. That there's no making it in this society. All right. That's why I think it is in uh, Revelations. Here, go right here. This is Revelations ten and ten. This is uh, John. All right, on the island of Patmos. Uh, who, you know, and like for these people, like these dumbass niggas who say the Bible ain't real. This is real history out here. This is uh, John on the island of Patmos. To my knowledge, he was exiled there in the salt mines by the, um, the Roman emperor Domitian. All right. This is just, you know, just a side note. This is, this wasn't a make-believe story. All right. 
This is Revelation 10 and 9. It says, And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, and but it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. Just like he said in Ezekiel. It said, And I took the little book out of and the angel's hand and ate it up, which is parabolic, which you know, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. But as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. All right, which is also another side note into reincarnation. Because the same John didn't leave that either. He didn't go to many nations and many prophets and kings. But he did throughout the generation and through a lifetime. Through different lifetimes. That's why he said, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. All right. And uh, but yeah, nevertheless, all right, this is it's a it's a bitterness to understand that we in captivity to understand that America, you know, because a lot of our people think America is the, the end all be all like there's no coming out of America. And when they hear this truth and they know, you know, they got to go out on Friday or on a Saturday, they'll never be able to take their baby mom and their family out on that dinner date or, or whatever the hell you got going on. The scriptures tell you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, all right? Once you come into this, this thing of ours, all right, this, this knowledge of being an Israelite, that's when it's on. That's when you put your hand forth to the plow. So whether you stop doing the work or not, that don't make uh, uh, the thing void that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah said that was going to happen. The Lord is still going to judge the so-called white man. They're still going into slavery. There's still going to be famine, martial law, like we read in Ezekiel, a book full of lamentations and mournings and woes. The RFID chip is the mark of the beast. It's coming. All right. That's going to be the hour of temptation. Many people will be dying. Many people will be getting atrocities going to happen on this planet of the earth. Like he said in Matthew the 24th chapter. Like he said in Daniel the 12th chapter. All right. But this is Luke 9 and 62. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put... His hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh. So if you put your hand on this plow and you came into this knowledge and this heritage and the Most High gave you this gift, all right, of being a Hebrew Israelite, you're a prisoner of hope now. Ain't no getting out of this, all right? Now, if you draw back, hey, that's on you, man. The Most High, you wasn't a believer. But did that make the word of God void? No. This is Romans 3 and 3. It says... For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Yahweh without effect? No. Yahweh forbid. Yea, let Yahweh be true. But every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and that thou mightest overcome when thou art judged. Because we all are going to be judged, man. The scripture says the judgment starts with the house of Israel, man. We, we have to be judged, all right? This 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 is going to come into play, all right? This is uh, Proverbs 11 and 31, it said, Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed, which means rewarded, paid back. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. So if you turn from this plow and, 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 and go back to your own vomit, you're going to have a, 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 the reward of the wicked, man. You're going to be treated as an uncircumcised, as a heathen, since you want to live up to that standard, which is no standard. All right, instead of getting out and getting here, picking up the plow. And being diligent to make your calling and election sure. All right. But, hey, some niggas believe a lie. That's that's what they are. Hey, the scriptures say we are not of them that draw back. The elect ain't going to draw back, man. All right. It's lucky. Let me check the time. All right. The elect, the elect ain't going to draw back. They're going to get out of here and do the work. All right. This is a... Uh, this is uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. And you got to remember, the Lord said the deceived and the deceiver are here. So it's all of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah who we want in and out this thing anyway. This is uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. It says, For this cause Yahweh shall send upon them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, he blinded them. He blinded them and he got them out the way because they weren't worthy of this thing. They weren't worthy of this thing. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, 
got them out of the way because they didn't want to do this thing. You were an Israelite, man. You were born a Hebrew Israelite. You're going to die a Hebrew Israelite, and you're going to be judged with the standard of a Hebrew Israelite. You got to live up to this. You got to do this. You got to breathe this to the best of your ability through the hard times, through the good times, through the bad times, and hopefully the Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shah have mercy on you. But with that being said, man, you know, I just wanted to vent that open forum out. Hopefully it was edifying. Call halal me how about shim me how a shot about shim with kakadash. Double honor to the elders and the apostles and to the hopeful elect. Shalom. And if you in this thing, you got a chance, man. Keep pressing.